Hey guys, it's Belle, and in this video we are going to be reading through an epigraphic inscription from the 6th century in Italy, which tells us a really interesting story about the Ostrogothic conquest of Italy and how individual Romans adapted to that situation. So, I will read through the Latin from top to bottom, and then we will get into it line by line. Ic levit hacet Dionysius artis honeste, functus et officio quod medicina dedit, Uios docta manus fa medul cerine capta, dispexit presi sordid da lucra sequi. Sepe salutis opus pietatis munneri uvit, dum refovet tenues dexterra larga viros. Optulit e grotis venientibus omnia gratis, implevit factis quod docuit munitis. Laudibus et terris famulatus mente fidelli, Destitit in licitis sactibus essereus. Amisis opibus robur non perdit ullum, Quo patiens predet impore dives erat. Ars veneranda fidem fidei decus exulit artem. Extudii titulos al terra mentis abet. Civibus ac sociis qualis fuit inde probatur. Quem potuit victor ostis amare sus. Posquam Romana captus discessit aburve, mox ibi iam dominos subdidit arte getas. Osce suis manibus vitam committer repecit, quorum mortiferos pertullet antemetus. So, what does all of this mean? Ic levita jacet Dionysius artis honeste. So, these, oh, functus as well. So, here, lies, Dionysius deceased, a Levite, so this is um, a lower, this lowest rank of clergy within the secular clergy, so they're below priests basically, but they perform some role in liturgical life. Artes honeste, of an honest art, and now we need to sort of do the next three lines all in one here, so et officio quod medicina delit, and in that business that which medicina, quod medicina, David, which medicine gave him, huius docta manus, the educated hand of this man, capturul cedine famme, captured by the sweetness of fame, dispexit preti sordida lucra sequi, scorned to follow the sordid rewards or profits of money, basically, of a monetary prize, prezi. So, from here to sequi, from ik to sequi, it's, um, here lies Dionysius of an honest skill, deceased, a Levite who is deceased, and in the business which medicine gave to him, his educated hand, seized by the sweetness of fame, scorned to follow the sordid profits of money. So, what we have from these four lines is that Dionysius was a minor person in the church, and he was an honest man who, he basically, although he was very well known, he didn't do what he did for money. Sepe salutis opus pietatis munere juvit. He often assisted juvit opus salutis, the, the task of health, so the task of restoring people to health, of course, as a doctor. Munere pietatis, through the service of piety or with the service of piety. Dum refove tenues dectora larga viros. While his right, l great right hand, basically, restores tender men. And bear in mind, these tender men are implied to be Romans for reasons that we'll see below. Optulit e gratis venientibus omnia gratis. He, I guess, carried out omnia, all things, e gratis venientibus, for the sick people who are coming, gratis, for free, for no money. In play with factis, quod doc with monitis. He completed with his deeds that which he taught with his admonitions, with his preachings, basically. Laudibus et terris famulatus mente fidelli. Famulatus means a man who was made famous. Laudibus et terris, with ethereal praises, mente fidelli, in, with a faithful mind, 
Destitis in Licitit Actibus Essenius. He ceased being guilty of illicit acts or being participating in guilty acts. Amicis opibus robur non perdidi tullum. Once he had lost all of his resources, amicis opibus, robur non perdidi tullum, he lost none of his strength. Quo patiens prede tempore dives erat. By which, enduring tempore prede in the time of plunder, so this is referring to the time in which the Ostrogoths were, the Ostrogoths and just Germanic barbarians in general were ravaging Italy. This is in Latin literature from the time period, dramatized most severely in Eugippius's life, of, the commentary on the life of Saint Severin, in which it is basically implied that there was no safe place and all of Italy was full of refugees, etc., etc., because the Goths were just stealing everything. And there is a great effort in the Justinian period, after Italy has been reconquered from the Ostrogoths by the Byzantines, to reframe the Ostrogoths in history as these vandalic, not in the literal <laughs> vandalic sense, but, you know, only interested in vandaling, vandalizing Italy and plundering everything, basically these pirates almost, who swarm upon the Italian population. So what this is saying is that Dionysius, the doctor just, you know, he endured, he survived the time of plunder. Um, and because of this skill, quo robur, uh, dives erat, he was rich during the time of plunder. Ars veneranda fidem Fidei decus exulit artem. So, what this means is the venerable art um, exulit, it exhibited, it brought forth. Fidem, fidei decus, and artem. So, because there's no and here, this is implying that all of these are sort of the same, the text is equivocating them. So, his good faith is similar to his decus fidei, which is like properness of faith, and his artem, his medical art, right? So what it's saying is his venerable skill exhibited Dionysus's faith, the properness of his faith, and also his technical skill as a, as a doctor. Ex studi titulos altera mentis abet. Um, and this other... Um, skill, basically, the, this other art, uh, has the t the titles or the trappings, studi mentis, of a, um, of a eager mind or a passionate mind. So what this is saying is that, um, his other skill, so this is perhaps referring to his role within the church, his piety, that indicates a mind which is set on passion and of in terms of helping other people. So this first line is saying that his medical skill shows the goodness of his faith, and the latter one is showing that because it's showing the goodness of his faith, this indicates that his mind was impassioned towards helping people improve in their lives, is what these two lines are saying, although the, the meaning of these two can be a little bit hard to pass out. Chivibus ac socis qualis fuit in de probator. It was then tested, or it is then tested, probator, qualis fuit, what kind of man he was, civibus ac socis, to the citizens and to his friends, quem botuit victor hostis amaresus, he whom victor hostis sus, his victor from among the enemy, botuit amare, was able to love. So this is saying that his enemy, the victorious enemy, in this case the Ostrogoths, were able to love Dionysius, despite obviously being technically enemies at the time because Dionysius was Roman and they were Goths. Bosquam Romana captus discesit aborve. So afterwards, having been captured, captus presumably by the Ostrogoths, discesit aborve Romana, he departed from the city of Rome. Moxibiam dominos subdidit arthegetas. Soon he subjugated the Gothic lords, the Getas Dominos, Sibi, to himself, Arte, through his art, through his skill. So what this is saying is that Dionysius, even though he has been put into the ostensibly subordinate position by being 
captured and perhaps even sold into slavery and brought from the city of Rome, the greatness of his medical skill is so great that he is able to subjugate the Gothic lords, literally perhaps by having them lie physically beneath him on an operating table or on a, a, a couch as he treats them medically. So in this way, he subjugates them and there can be read certain I guess, sexual undertones to this, depending on how one chooses to do so, particularly if we bear in mind this idea that Greco-Roman medical mores would have held that Dionysus, by virtue of being a Roman, had better control of his bodily humours than the Ostrogoths, who were a bit out of control, because they come from colder climates where the regional temperatures do not lend to men having a very suitable control over their emotions, and therefore, when they are in these kinds of situations, the Ostrogoths may be less in control of themselves, and being less in control of oneself was understood to be the condition of the pathetical severe, or the sort of passive homosexual man. So there are like very slight, perhaps, sexual undertones to some of these, or at least these kinds of metaphors of the Goths being subordinated to the Romans could have lent themselves to certain kinds of sexual readings in the time period, because these ideas of ethnicity and sexuality are to some extent, still intertwined in the time period. So these last two lines, now that he's subjugated the Goths to him, he says, Hoshe suis monibus vitam comita refecit. And he made these men commit to life, basically, suis monibus, um, with his hands. So he entrusted, basically, life to these men, or he made sure that these men lived, is what these lines are saying, with his hands. Quorum morti for spertulit antemetus. Um, these men of whom the the, um, the moribund men morti for us quorum spertulit antemetus. He bore. He basically carried them out. He took care of them. Um, in in the face of antemetus morti for us. In the, in the face of their deadly fears. So basically, the Ostrogoths, the Ostrogothic lords, when they were sick, they were afraid of dying. And notice that they were afraid they had medus mortiferos, whereas the sick Romans above whom he healed, these were not implied to be afraid of it at all. They were just egrotis, they were just sick. So down here, we have an emotional affect assigned to the Ostrogoths, but we don't have to the Romans, because the Romans are sort of temperate, they're in control of their emotions, whereas the Ostrogoths, in the face of illness, become afraid, and they need, therefore, to subjugate themselves to Dionysius in order to be restored to health and restored to life. So it's a really interesting metaphor at play in this entire poem, where, which is saying that even though the Ostrogoths were perhaps temporarily able to achieve military victory over Rome, they have to subordinate themselves to Greco-Roman medical knowledge and medical skill in order to save themselves, whether that be understood in a sort of spiritual or a med medical, physical sense. So there we go. This is the story of Dionysius the doctor, who was so good at what he did that the Ostrogoths themselves had to hire him to heal their injuries and all this lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to teach you Latin or any of the other languages I do here on this channel, you can subscribe to my Patreon, which will be linked in the description of this video. You can also join my Discord server. I tend to post these um, screenshots uh, of the tidbits in my server before I make them into videos, so you can have access to them early over on my Discord server. And we also have a fun community of like-minded people who share memes and hang out together. Sometimes we do movie nights. You should come and check us out. The link will be in the description of this video. And until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, everyone.